Welcome back to the Cock podcast for our first in uh, house podcast for a while. We're really excited today. We're joined by a man for the first time in about seven months. Hello. <laughs> um, and, I forgot we did this. <laughs> and, yeah, well, we haven't. Um, yeah. And yeah, the honorary mm-hmm. Bose president, um, uh, a man. Um, and we're also joined today by. Um, a mate of ours, and uh, really excited to welcome Damo uh, on to today's episode. How's Come on, United. Welcome, welcome. Man, United. Come on, United. Uh, we've loads to talk about, loads happening, um, loads not happening, um, loads of interest and talking points. Um, Damo, maybe you might just talk us through your relationship with the football club. My relationship with the football club, uh, my earliest memory would be sitting in front of the TV with my dad. I think it was around six or seven or something like that. And he quite like as as um like he literally was screaming at the TV, play it wide. Like he literally used to scream that all the time. And this would have been when Fergie, I think you're talking about eighty five. I'm so delighted you didn't say that like anything around race or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it to what? Yeah, my, my my memories of being in different houses were slightly different. Um, yeah, no, he did, but it, that's that's how it started, and then, uh, um, yeah, just after, but like that was in that was would have been in eighty seven, and when the when did Fergie come in? What year did Fergie? Eighty six. Yeah, eighty six. So he, like that was when United were just. They were becoming really, really exciting. So you're like a proper fan like I was before we won anything. Once Cantona came in, I was lost. I got lost in Cantona. And Kinchelskis. I was such a fan of Andrzej Kinchelskis. Yeah. Yeah. He does exactly what we want Anthony to do. He used to do. He'd piss down the wing yeah. and bring it in and he'd score. Yeah, he'd score. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. being such an interesting character, he, he deserves a spot of conversation on this show once upon a time. I loved Didn't him. Didn't he have dangerous ties with the Russian mafia? Something like that. I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because his nationality was Ukraine. Ukrainian, right? Yeah. He played for the Ukrainian team. Yeah. But he owed money or there was some sort of toys. Ukrainian? Um, What's he doing now? I heard that it was managed. Ferguson paid, I, had Man United pay for the clear debt, but then he was sold to Everton. I don't know how true it is or Everton, if that's the real, yeah. but apparently there was something iffy with Kinchelskis and that was why he... I vaguely remember that. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't put it past him. He was very, very fast. He was really fast, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting fact about Kinchelskis. In FIFA 1996, if you purposely scored an own goal, Position team, the goal was immediately awarded to Andre Kinchelskis. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he was top scorer? Yeah, I used to take Robbie Fowler and I'd score OG after OG and then Kinchelskis would celebrate. And he got My type of game. Um, yeah. Russian mafia. So, uh, <laughs> as per usual, I've prepared some interesting talking points uh, because everybody loves a boffin. Mm. Um, so, we're going to jump right in at some on some of the hot topics um, and you can take them up as, 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 as you wish. Um, I suppose the biggest, most obvious one, which is not kind of, well, is and isn't Man United related over the last couple of days, would be the Jaden Sancho debate, which rages, rages, rages on as per usual. The greatest yeah. performance of all time. Yeah. Like, apparently, he played better than Pele in the 1970 yeah. final. Day, I agree. Um, <laughs> he can fuck off for a start. He can. You know, a sw- one swallow doesn't make a summer. Yeah. You know? I remember watching him all last season and he was. You know, to to put it mildly, kind of unpredictable. You know, where do you stand on him? And we kind of go that way. Um, who would like to see him back, or does anyone give a shit? I wouldn't take him back. Like you said, you know, the one swallow doesn't make a summer. Like I've been, I've been kind of following his time at Dortmund. Um, apparently, he's just been completely average. You know, is that, until... another, is that another team that you support? Oh no, no, this is purely <laughs> just reading about it. But like. <laughs> Like we, I watched the game and he was brilliant. Like, there's no denying that, you know. Nice. And like, you can see the talent that the kid has. Sure. But uh, you know, the problem with Jaden Sancho isn't like, isn't his ceiling. You know, you know how talented he is or what what he can do. Mm-hmm. The problem with Jaden Sancho is his floor. Like when he comes to the butt, it just falls out of it. You know. Yeah. Um, and like the amount of like, not even joking, like zero out of tens you'd see him, yeah. you know, put out in a Man United shirt. The you know you can have one t- ten out of ten game once in a while, but that's not enough to justify your spot. I'd rather mm. take seven out of tens every week than one ten out of ten every few weeks. You know. Yeah, totally. I mean, and the man then, six sits up till four o'clock in the morning playing computer games and then goes training. Yeah, I mean that's but, all I needed to know. Well, everyone yeah. saw like how talented the kid is, and like I remember when we signed them for seventy million, everyone was saying, 
that's a good price, you know, for the for the talent you thought you were getting. Yeah. And like that that game in the Champions League just demonstrated what he has. It's just he doesn't have the the mental fortitude. I he guess doesn't have the record record Celtic soul. Man. <laughs> and it's really annoying after like the club, you know, supported him throughout his whole thing, and he gets one piece of criticism and he couldn't handle it. Yeah, you know, he, that just shows he, he crumbled, you. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'd agree you. with that. Yeah, yeah. Damo, where are you with Jadon? Uh, I probably feel the same. Like you know, like uh, like you said, you know, I'd rather I'd rather like a load of seven out of tens or whatever than just like just such you know I'm brilliant on one game, but then for like ten mm. whatever amount of games, I'm not that good at all. Mm. Um, and is is at first? Do you remember when he went to the states? Do you remember when when he went to the states to do some program? for a while this this training program and i was yeah. oh, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and i thought to myself i says well that's good we know he has a bit of a bad attitude that's good and he's taking it on board and ten hags doing a good job and this that and the other but i don't think as soon as he was called out he grumbled yeah and if you're going to a club like manchester united and you're all every single player will be called out at some point yeah. so you need to be prepared for that but did ten hag like did he handle it correctly by by saying that, in I don't know. He didn't sack him on the spot. He sent him off to. But you do you know, remember his kind of, didn't he? Do, do you remember his no? When he when he said about Sancho and Sancho then said I'm being made the scapegoat. Yeah. Could Ten Hag have handled that better? I wonder. You know. There's an argument to be had about that. You know. Yeah. You keep it behind closed doors. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that's the big one. Yeah. It's just like us. We don't wash our dirty laundry in public. Exactly. Mm. I, I tell you all the terrible things before we go and camp. <laughs> but, <laughs> but did, like, I mean, Ferguson used to wash out players before as well. Didn't bollock, he? bollock anyone for yeah, anything, even yeah. if they didn't deserve it. I mean, yeah. the recent interview with Lee Sharp, where he's like, I played well and I got given out. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the team universally acknowledged that I played well in that game and he bollocked me when yeah. I came in. I think, I think maybe. I don't know. You just have to be made of stronger stuff, I suppose. You know. I don't know. There's a bit of snowflakery going on. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, Polly, I think this is the first time we have a collective agreement that I also <laughs> wouldn't mind seeing the back of Sancho at this stage, mm. like you. I mean, he was one of the f- the most um, exciting prospects Man United were signing. I couldn't believe. Him yeah. Him. It's like this, and then Ronaldo coming in the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> He doesn't have the mentality to be there at the club. He doesn't want to be at the club. Let him go. I think the early signs are on the wall as well with Sancho. It is reputation at Man City, falling out with Pep Guardiola, wanting more for himself, which he's entitled to do so. Yeah. But I think we might have been blindsided by he wanted to play first team football. Evidently, he's deserved it. But there seemed to be more going on with him behind the scenes. I think Ten Hag handled that as best he could have. He called him out. Mm-hmm. What you expect from a player when you call them out is a reaction. And you hope for a positive reaction. I've seen Luke Shaw be called out and come back mm. fighting, probably become better than ever, yeah. and still get shredded by Mourinho. But he was trying to get a reaction. I seen the video. I don't know if they were manipulated to show his weak training and him not performing at mm. the level of others. But you know, Ten Hag has to be seen to run a tight ship there, and I th- I think he's done right. Listen, you're not training enough. Train better. Play better. Mm. Not happening. All right, well, that's right. that. Right. Right. Part ways. Apologize. Say sorry. Yeah, Get yeah. back into the squad. I, here's the thing. How many times have we apologised as individuals to our girlfriends when we've done nothing wrong? So he, we need to, <laughs> So Sancho needs to apologise to his girlfriend if he wants to get his rock and roll. Do you not think it's too late now? <laughs> how, 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 how many months has it been now since? It's six months easily. Six uh, months. The longer it goes on, the less the less hit yeah. his apology will have. I, I think I think he should be gone. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, segue into the. Ten Hag interview that he did with Gary Neville um, recently. I thought that Ten Hag came across very scholarly and wise and um, stoic as, as per usual. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it was a real reality check, especially for shows like this, you know, for fans to kind of cop on. And it's like, no, he's not going to sell 11 players. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he'll try and get two or three players in and he'll try and offset. But people have contracts. You can't just move them on. No, you can't. For, for yeah. 40 million less than they're worth. It doesn't work. Especially like if that. no one wants to buy them. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if no one wants to buy them. I think, he, I think he handled himself really well and he knows more about this. What that definitively showed me is that he knows more about his own future than anybody else. Yeah. Um, and that we need to stop speculating on whether he's, he's never, he was never going to get sacked. It is part of a brush Yeah. Uh, the push issue with the club yeah. and uh, um, he, he, they were always going to hold on to him I think at the end of next year at the end of next year 
when everyone's back fit and we have someone to give uh, Rasmus support, then we can judge him fully on the basis of that information. If he's if he's not ransacked by injuries again next season. Yeah, I think Ten Hag is like an old school coach. You know, he probably rubs a lot of modern young footballers the wrong way. Like Don Reedy. When, yeah, when he, <laughs> you know, demands standards while well, these guys, all they want to really do is play FIFA and post yeah. Instagram stories, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was reading uh, um, something on uh, Daniela De Rossi from Roma. He's one of my favorite players growing up. Oh, he's amazing. Rossi, and yeah. big, the, the biggest Roy Keane fan. Number six, yeah. He wore 16 because of his daughter's birthday and Roy Keane. Yeah. Um, but he said recently enough when he took over, I think or just before when he took over at Roma, that when he sees or hears of players going live on Instagram or posting social media before a game, he wants to smash their teeth in with a baseball bat. <laughs> right. That's what he said. <laughs> Yeah, you wonder. I mean, I thought I thought Neville's questions were, were pretty good. Remember when he was asking about the style of play? Yeah, and like the second he asked that question, I almost winced. I was like, "What's he gonna mm. say?" Because I'm not quite sure mm. now. But then, like the injuries and all of that, like everybody said, ah, so you're, you're, like, are the injuries just an excuse, or are they like are they injuries or are they injury? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then, but, kind of brought that up a bit. Like, is this a psychological thing, or are they actually? Injured? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, do, do you know when he says um, illness? Yeah, illness. That's a fucking illness. Yeah, yeah. that's that, that's. Well, I was up too late playing FIFA last it's night. He's ill. Game. You know, is that what is that no, is that what that means? The, the Daniel Sturridge mentality that Jared spoke was: there was never anything wrong with that young play. He just didn't have the head for the game. And I wonder, yeah. what's going on in Man United? You know, is there players like that? Like Bruno Fernandez gets kicked up and down that park hmm. I've never known Bruno Fernandes to be out with injury yeah, and no, I've seen him no. get hurt on the pitch he broke his yeah. hand and he played last week yeah, yeah that's going. right yeah yeah. And what does that tell you um, a lot of people would be disgusted that we're even bringing this up but it's you know an, an important question to bring up based on where we're at and what what's not going to happen next season just an award and if you want to elaborate you don't have to uh, you can if you want but you don't have to uh, Mason Greenwood should he come back? Yes or no? No. Um, no. <laughs> I'll elaborate on this with a no also. <laughs> Somebody, whether or not accused of that sort of behaviour, and we all heard the videotape, whatever yeah. it was, it was a private thing, and it was role play between him and his girlfriend, and they're together married now with a child. That still got leaked to the public, and it was put out the way it was. Yeah. We she didn't, she didn't somebody, punch herself in the mouth. And Daniel, have and Daniel De Rossi didn't the hit her in the face with a baseball bat, did he? <laughs> like it, it just can't be. It, the club can't be seen to let somebody like that represent them, even if he ends up being world class, even if he ends up going to a rival and whatever else. Yeah, we have to be seen to be setting a standard, and that is certainly yeah. a standard that needs to be avoided by domestic violence against women in any capacity. Yeah. is yeah. not to be tolerated. There's that's, things bigger than football talent. You know? yeah. yeah, more yeah. important than that. And ama- amazingly enough, he's getting a, a rebirth in Spain, where they, you know, took six months to, you know, chastise the, you know, the the Spanish FA president after he was rubbing everyone up when they yeah. like, no, and he kissed yeah. that, kissed that uh, Spanish captain, didn't he? The women's captain. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Ru- yeah. Rubles. Rubles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Casey. <laughs> of course, everyone gets a second chance in Spain. Um, <laughs> so, it, look, it happened to Kevin Moore and, and, and John Aldridge. Um, does, does fans chanting racist chants get a second chance every weekend? They do, they don't they? There, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, luckily, we're, 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 a lot better, we're a lot better at that in this country, I mm. think, than they are in the UK. Um, I'm just quickly going to talk about Jose Mourinho because he is shit storing like mad behind the scenes. He's mad to get back in. Get back in. I love Jose. Man. How, how I really do. Is, is he is he mad? Is he mad to get back in, or is he really doing? Is is he is he like I told you, United? I think I'll just yeah. store the pot and just have it. You know, <laughs> just like wind you up. Do you know what I mean? I and then they go and they ask him. He's like, Nah, I'm not coming back. I don't <laughs> like no, I don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he didn't. He, he said in like a Rio Ferdinand interview that he loves the club. So why would you not want to go back if it didn't work out? Like, here's the thing, and let's be honest, based on what we've learned afterwards, we're spoiled brats. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, he won three trophies, albeit not the trophies necessarily we'd want to win, but he, his, like... The squad he and had And finished well. second. The yeah. squad he had. Second. Like, the, the squad he had to compete to, to, compete to finish Compared second. Compared to what, yeah. what we have now, in comparison. Yeah. yeah. Like, they were all leggy. Everyone yeah. was a fucking mm-hmm. Fellaini. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, he did well. There's no question. There's no... You can't, you can't he, really... He did well, and he won trophies, and... There is a little bit of an element of looking at Jose with rose tinted glasses at the moment. I oh, would have him back in a heartbeat. I let, think... us, let us not forget he brought in Eric Bailly, Victor Lindelof, 
and then they weren't good enough for him himself. And then he wanted Harry Maguire and Toby Allerwell show his toys out of the pram publicly when he couldn't get them because the players he was bringing in was not good enough. He brought in Paul Pogba for all that money, fell out with him. He signed Slatan, which worked out great, let him go, re-signed him, never did anything with him. Mm -hmm. A lot of his transfers were very... They looked great on paper, but they didn't quite work out. Mm-hmm. Um, was that him, though? Was the Pogba signing Jose? Just, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I would imagine I, that was... I think that was a board thing, Jose. purely purely marketing, you know? I don't so think I, it was I don't, we, we don't know. We speculate about the ins and outs of transfer oh, policy. Yeah. I would say Mourinho was given the opportunity to sign Pogba, and he jumped on it because any manager... Would Anyone would That Paul heard. Pogba we were signing was elite. Yeah, the, He showed glimpses of it, but didn't quite work out. But Lindelof was his... Uh, Alexis Sanchez, I am oh, certain, was his. That was yeah. Romelu Lukaku. He divided opinion. I really like Lukaku. I would have preferred. Uh, actually, I would have preferred Alvaro Morata. I thought he would have fit our system a bit better. Mm-hmm. But Mourinho got a fairly substantial transfer, Kitty. And let me not forget to mention a sixty million euro Fred, sixty million pound Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so Mourinho was given his due Bargain. course there. But for, he for, for fans of the well show, for, fra- for fans of the show, we want to call him by his proper title. Which is French. 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 <laughs> I miss French. <laughs> I miss French as well. Nobody misses French. No, I, do, no, I miss French. I do, genuinely do. I t- I t- he, he would have fixed it. He would have literally would have. Would Great have, squad player. He would have sorted out some problems we've had this year. Yeah, I, t- I agree. I, I agree. Like, I t- what I t- what I t- problems with a player who can't receive a pass sorted out? Imagine Onana distributing the ball to Fred, who panics on receiving a ball yeah. and just squanders possession. Pure entertainment. Well, he'd do a cli- <laughs> yeah, no, he'd do a little dance. But he'd do a little dance. He'd do a calypso and everything yeah. would be okay. Oh, but he I tried so hard. I try very hard. I, t- I, I thought he had the legs, though, you know, for the type of football. That, Five yards. Yeah, him. Yeah. Five yards. <laughs> no, I do, I, That's his job. I, I wasn't heartbroken when he was when he was gone, but I was sad when he was gone because I thought I thought in terms of the squad, he would have been a, a, another good runner for us, you know. Mm. Um, right, moving on. Um so, it, we're not going to get champ, Champions League. That's self-evident. Uh, is that confirmed now, isn't it? It's literally confirmed, mathematically confirmed, impossible. Europa League, possibly, if we get the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, I, like, if we finish sixth or <laughs> se- I know, it's, uh, yeah, it's like talking about yeah. like, what you didn't get for Christmas in the no. 80s. <laughs> yeah. um, this, this is the worst finish since I've supported them. Where yeah, are we going to end there, up? There about, it's pro- seventh or eighth, oh, I'd yeah. say. So, I said in the first podcast we did here, I did say that Ten Hag should be allowed to finish as low as eight and keep his job because it really is a transitional period. But never did I expect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no more over predictions. Here. This season. Yeah, no more predictions. No predictions. Yeah, yeah. I reckon we'll get Champions League football. <laughs> And I, well, if I remember correctly, I said, I, th- I think we'll win the Champions League. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll win it. But come here, come here, come here. They, they, were, they were okay uh, assumptions to make based on last season. Yeah. They were. Yeah. They yeah. were. And they were a bit we, highfalutin, but they were, they were accurate. Yeah, 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 really yeah, yeah. I mean, but the football, the football we played, and then if you think, right, we've been playing this football, and now we have a, a whole season to work on it properly. Mm. Yeah. You know, so, and, and, Jesus, just, there was that really progress injuries. last year, but the, I think the summer transfer window is quite, like, disastrous. Like hey guys, here's Mason Mount. He's injured. He won't play. But you have to. Uh, Who is him. this Mason Mount you keep talking about? <laughs> Who is this man? Yeah. <laughs> we should do like an, an infomercial never for, seen for a missing Mason Mount. Find Tyrell Malasia while you're at it. This man's um, disappeared. Just yeah. quickly, um, when is the Conference League on Monday nights at two o'clock in the morning? Isn't it? Or Conference League match? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so who's looking forward to, 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 to like you know? I'd uh, actually take Conference 8, League. Eight hundred BC, going back in time at mo- Monday mo- on Monday evenings at two forty-five AM to watch. You know, I'd actually take like like a Yeah, mm. I think it'll be a good like testing ground for young players coming through. You know, if they can do it on a cold, rainy night. In I would you fuck up? Would you fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, it made him hell. <laughs> um, I think it'd be great. Look, if it's good enough for West Ham and fucking Brighton. And you get to go play away in like the Faroe Islands or something. Yeah, right. Well, be not, look. In fairness, if you're looking for random trips to the most remote parts of hell, yeah, you know, uh, Man United are your team. Yeah, it's yeah. Like Dora, you know, like yeah. you never play these teams. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, you can support one of them. They can be your fourth best team. <laughs> what an interesting <laughs> post office in Liechtenstein this is. Um, so yeah, look, just looking at strategy, kind of going forward. Is anybody enthused by what's happening behind the scenes? Um, have they been have they been built around Ten Hag to a degree? So I, I think Ten Hag is v- de- more deeply rooted in what's happening um, 
than we realise. I think he's been part of it all in a, in, a, in a very, very kind of, not in a Fergie way in terms of he's like a director of football way, but you look back at Fergie and you look back at Ar- Arsene Wenger and they were their directors of football as well as managers and mm-hmm. ran the club. I think Eric Ten Hag ha- has been much cuter and much more deeply embedded in that process than the process than people realise. Yeah. So is, you know, is Eric Ten Hag or has he always been part of that overall foundational club redevelopment? And we've all, and behind the, uh, the scenes in the periphery, we've all been like, fucking get him out. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And it, meanwhile, he's been like, I've been given assurances that I'm not going to get sacked. And we're all, it's fine. We're working on a project. But has he mm-hmm. <laughs> Like every time they ask any of the Ineos people, like, it, is Ten Hag the man for you? If he actually was, they'd come out and go like, you know, public show of support, go, yeah, he is. But every time they've asked, they've just been like, Quiet. We'll see. Public shows that's, are, that's support, a little are often very detrimental, though. So yeah. it's a bit of a two-sided thing. No, I don't necessarily think that he had any involvement in what's gone on in the background. I definitely don't think it's been built around him. But I do think it's going to offer support to him. But I would imagine there is a contingency in place for immediate effect should he fail at the start of the season. I reckon he will get six games to show what he's about at the start of next season, especially with an Ineos summer transfer, Kitty. Do you think? And then... I I don't know no. I I don't know man I t- I think I think it'd be suicide to sack him halfway through a season I t- yeah. I think I think when he was brought in like when he was brought in the Ineos thing wasn't even imagined by that stage was yeah, it no. so he he was brought in um, probably had a look around. He's like, right, this is a bigger fucking project than I thought. Whatever. You have to say project uh, pro- or and pro- process. Uh, pro- <laughs> process and project. But but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But 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 then but then I I I would imagine he's now excited with 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 Sir James and all the rest of the lads coming in. You know, I all these new people. Hope so. and, yeah, and I love him to succeed because he was my first choice for manager. I was same. I think the marker will be laid down at the start of next season that he will have six games where we'll expect almost maximum points and certainly no loss to a mm. Brentford or a Brighton mm. or whoever, a new promoted club. There was a social media post. And six matches is a, a fairly okay time to make a decision on Sure, you get a full manager. Was there, was, there was a social media post about, really about Eric Ten Hag uh, last week that I was reading that was interesting about, you know, at one point last season, he had the most, he had the highest win wins. ratio yeah, yeah. of any manager, manager in Europe, yeah. not just in the league, yeah. in Europe. Um, He's the, uh, he's the like Barcelona the was in from like uh, m- he was being monitored by Bayern Munich. So it's not like he still will be if we sack him. That's the reality of it. Because they'll all look at it objectively and go, "Why are they treating this fucking you know yeah. mastermind like a prick?" Yeah. You know, but it's like the environment that United. It was like like for years. No matter who went there, it was like this is where you go to die. Yeah. As a player and as a manager, this is where you go to tarnish your reputation. You're going to give this poison ch- challenge a chance. It's not going to work out. Yeah. And I strongly believe that that's changing now with Ineos. Like if you look what they've done, already. Bicycle, but they have. It was a bicycle team and a race car team. Did, yeah. did uh, Jim Ratcliffe yeah. email all of you at the week? Yeah. During the week so yeah, yeah. Like running his finger along. Every desk. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's good. That's given no. out. That's good. No. I didn't. Apparently, I wasn't putting my socks in a ball. Yeah, I was just throwing them in the drawer. It was a bit extreme though, when he was threatening to cancel the Christmas party for everyone, or like what their time off during Christmas if the team was underperforming. It doesn't seem very fair on like, you know, I Becky and accounting it. to miss her Christmas holidays because Rashford misses a sit early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that doesn't seem very fair. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like, like that, I, I think now, like, he's, got, he's gone in. If you, if you, if you think of it from Ten Hag's point of view, right, he's gone in. There's been, you know, announced uh, this team needs open heart surgery, this, that, the other, all this crap is going on. Mm-hmm. He goes in. He tries to do his best. He doesn't do too bad last season. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, Ineos come in just when the shit's hitting the fan for him. Mm-hmm. I would say he's got every reason to be optimistic. You know mm. what I mean? He does. All the players coming back, um, hopefully a decent enough transfer kitty in the mm. summer as well. Do you know what I mean? From his point of view, yeah. I'm going to bring this up because it came up on some of the online chats we did, but I want to just throw it to you guys. Um, there's not going to be massive money. We're not going to be spending 100 million on a striker. It's just not going to happen. Mm. Um, so what I think will happen is that we'll go young and we might go in the Premier League or we might go Championship and surprise people. Now, my my, my mm. stance on this, and I've, ju- I've been watching a lot of them this year, would be to try and get that... Look, we need two strikers, not just one. So 
I'd go so far as to say, and I think Evan Ferguson's head has been torn because of all of the attention. So I'd love to see, and I'm biased maybe by virtue of my nationality, but I'd like to see Evan Ferguson in there off Rasmus, and I'd like to see Sammy Smoddox in there. <laughs> Look at him fucking laughing. Go, you support Bose, you fucking <laughs> clown. <laughs> The worst team in the league with notions this year. So if, if I had a preference of a striker, I'd be looking hopefully at getting a. Sammy Smoddock scored thirty odd goals last season. You mad whore? For who? The twilight for, of his career. Doesn't matter. Robert, Robert Lewandowski. Lewandowski. If, 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 if he was available, right? Because he's at the twilight of his career now. He's coming towards the end. We've had players come in the twilight of their career, like Ibrahimovic and Cavani. Seems to work well for us. So you know, Lewandowski's I, not going to take Rasmus place. Yeah, Evan somebody to. Yeah, I never yeah, thought of that's, that. But that's a great. That's shot that's a <laughs> really that's that's a really good point. I'd love the idea of Evan Ferguson so, going to United. Same, I would, you know, I would, well, I think we, are, but you know, mm, definitely. I that's why I mentioned. I, yeah, I, I, just, I think, think you need great. someone more experienced to back up Rasmus. You know, you can't. Rasmus uh, can, uh, if Evan Fer- scored, Rasmus is the epitome of inexperienced. He mm. was at Atlanta. Like he would have Ferguson probably even more. He would bet. There's no doubt um, yeah. Rasmus would benefit from a more experienced striker in there. And if you did bring in Evan Ferguson, right, like either him or Rasmus is going to be on the bench. They're just going to alternate, yeah. aren't they? They really are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's what we need. Look at that's the treble winning season in '99. We'd four strikers that were top yeah. of their game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, like you should be fighting. To but that was in a position where clubs are playing two strikers. We play a one striker. Yeah, yeah so that's the two yeah. strikers at the top of the game. But I do think it breeds too much competition to have Evan Ferguson and. Yeah. Rasmus in there where what about Sammy Smoddix yeah. <laughs> yeah nobody's mentioned what a lot of, of Smoddix <laughs> yeah, nobody's know that mentioned I don't know who he is <laughs> you have you just ignored me I know, I, know the, I know the name but who I need to know more I need to know more about him he plays for Blackburn Blackburn and he was ch- top scorer in the championship oh last no uh, I no. wouldn't have him uh, no no I think genuinely just and, and I'll tell you why because um, I've, I've watched him over the last year inadvertently in the championship and the standard in the championship is a lot better than you might think ah, yeah. it is. no it is because Klopp even said it during the week he said he loves watching the championship yeah, no. look at the top six teams in the championship they're all ex-premiership teams some with really big reputations from the past so that A B Sammy Smoddox I've seen him <laughs> you laughing at his name <laughs> <laughs> what a load of Smoddox this is the most ridiculous uh, conversation hold on let me, let me finish yeah, my point no, no. Let, let me finish my point I, I seen him play for Ireland twice in the window at the stadium and he was chasing down every single ball in the way every player we criticise in the, in the top four or five of our attackers for United are not doing apart from Granacho. Mm. Um, okay, Anthony is point. Anthony is in fairness he does but yeah. he can't do anything else um, he, can, he can cut in he, he can, can cut, cut in, in and take a shot you know <laughs> against the defender's tie yeah, yeah. so How with, with that know? same kind of thought in mind Paul yeah. would you have Carlton Carlton Morris or Luton? I'd have Carlton Palmer. Champion Luton striker. He, he in the championship he had twenty something goals. Yeah, and he's been doing fairly decent in the Premier League. Luton are about to get relegated. He'll be available for transfer. Would you have him? Is he because he's a similar sort of Elka player that you're talking about there? He can do it. I'm looking. At, I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm looking at types, different types, and I'm looking at the, the fact that we have big strikers and we need someone s- kind of small for knock-ons. Yeah, and knock-ons. yeah. yeah. Uh, that's can, why. can you imagine? But that's can, why I'm saying. Yeah. That. Can, can you imagine, right? If 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 you so know, no is the answer to that. If yeah, you, if United you know went for that's a championship I mean. player, right? That's and it, Jamie Ward. and it didn't work out. Can you imagine? Can you imagine like? Like if they brought in a championship player and he he just couldn't he couldn't adapt. Couldn't well, we adapt. did it with Daniel be, James and he was muck. Like, that's yeah, that's yeah. but the, from from their point of view. You Look know, at Jamie Vardy. Take the risk? Look at Jamie Vardy. I love Jamie Vardy. I Jamie Vardy still at thirty six is scoring twenty. Great story. Look what he did up all from 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 non league all the way up to top, top scorer in the yeah. Premier League Premier League winner, FA Cup winner, back down back up again. Like that's what we need. That's the mentality. Is the is the old school footballer going? Mm. I don't give a fuck. Give me the ball. Mm. Yeah, and that's what we need because there's too many people that are just like from when they were 15 years of age, they were touted as the best player in the world, mm. and that's the problem because they go mm. to the biggest team in the world, yeah, and then they young. can't do it. Yeah, um, and they're playing computer games at two o'clock in the morning. And, yeah. and just to bring that up again, you know, that's the problem with it. We want someone who has to ha- has had to fight for it more. 
So someone that's b- between the ages of kind of 27 or 28 that's worked their way up and grafted from bigger club to bigger club would really appreciate a move to Man United. Yeah. Makes sense. They're the players we need. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd yeah. say someone yeah. like Ollie Watkins would be perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's a good suit. That's a good suit. Watkins, you're looking at an elite player there. Plus United tax. From the championship. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at 150 million for Ollie Watkins. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. that fella? He's, he, I think you mentioned him before as a potential signing. Was his yeah, name Sadi Sammy Smollett? No. Brighton went to Everton. On, and he's at Brentford on loan now, and he's, he just wins everything. Mio Mope. Mope. Yeah, no. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> he's the same elk as Vardy, right? You know. Don't, don't have me Mope, no. Mope in around the studio. Um, uh, so, look, again, to bring up this thing, this, you know, foreboding, horrible, dark cloud that envelops Old Trafford all season. Marcus Ras- Rashford, isn't it? Is it time for him to part ways? Oh, good for his career. Hurt. Good for the club. And do you know what? Even if he went on to say PSG, who seem to be the only club that can buy him, let's be honest, they can the only ones that can afford to still pay eighty million. Would for you him. would you buy him after this season? It doesn't matter. They would buy him because they think that United are a fucking poison chalice. All the clubs in Europe laugh at us. Oh, I know. Um, so I can hear them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised when I trolled more. To be honest yeah. with you, um, but you know. <laughs> PSG would be a good move for him and even if he won the Champions League be. the following year because we are not in it so I don't give a fuck I'd be delighted for him yeah but he has to go doesn't he he has to go surely he has to go I think so because he's, he's getting abuse now he's he getting bre- abused he breaks my heart Marcus Rashford like I remember when Van Gaal brought him through and all and like how excited you were the dynamic yeah. runs from the left you know finishing against the big big teams yeah, all yeah, the time yeah. turning up against the big teams all the time even if he's playing shit and then he, he what was it, Torchy something. Sorry, hold on. I've just got a message there in my ear. Tony Marshall is in, is back in training. Who? Uh, and, and he actually. Tony yeah. Marshall has yeah. heartburn. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> sorry, he's, he's ill. He, uh, Tony, yeah. Sorry, that, oh, sorry. Stop. That's fake you know, news. He's, he's, Tony Marshall has an illness. I forgot he was a United player. He's been out so long. He's, he's been out so long. I forgot he was a United player. But, believe, but, but Marcus Rashford, like, it's, heart, it's heartbreaking when you yeah. see him hitting the 30 goals. Mm-hmm. Right, and then, and you know, like he's he's United born Salford. Is he Salford? I think I don't Tony know. Tony Marshall, I don't yeah, think not so. Tony Marshall. Right? <laughs> well, but that's that's what I mean. It's just it's like I would hate to see him go. Well, I think it might be time. Maybe that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. By heartbreaking, if you, if you, if you know look, what I mean. If you love somebody, you have to set them free. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. Sometimes love Maybe is not enough. Yeah. Sometimes love is not enough. You know? theory on the trajectory of how Marcus Rashford's career is going to go. They've moved to PSG, will never happen. It'll be rumoured, but it'll never happen. He'll be under in the Man United squad for the next two, three years. He'll That's a wasted place. End up on loan at an Everton. Or he, he'll have a Jack Wilshire type trajectory where all the potential was there and he puts on displays of sometimes excellence, but never really hits that height. And you hope. Do you think, do you think his really, career's gone? Look, even Wilshire if he moves is on? a really good player, but like, do you think I mean, do you what think, did he do? Do you think his career's gone? Regardless? Yeah, I, I, think he'll, um, I think he'll be under in that squad. Deli I think Ali he'll get less and less luck in. Mm. Not as hard a fall of grace as poor Deli Ali, but eventually, two, three years, and no big move will materialise. It'll be an end of contract scenario mm-hmm. where he does Danny Welbeck. I don't know, man. I don't, like, I, like, I well, I hope not. But I mean, who's the best? All, all of the time, Rashford has been in United. Mm-hmm. Um, which manager got the best out of him? Ten Hag. Yeah, and Van Gaal. Van Gaal. Did he have? Did he score? Like you, you know, Sheikh Meshukishum. He was still really young, yeah. Pulling hair, shakes, yeah. masochism. I don't know. I'd ha- I'd hate to like. I think he probably should go, but I'd hate to see him go. Yeah. So. Well, he had that first really bad patch, and he got over it and went on that great run last season with it. And mm. then he's just fallen off again. And then now that's a pattern. You know, you can't rely on that going forward. And there's, yeah, what if there's, it happens again, you know, like like there's something. You know, between him and then Jaden Sancho, and and just you know, like, and they're not injured. They're just not. Their, their form is so up and down yeah. and up and down. Like if that's a, that has to be a mentality thing, or some sort I of energy totally, energy totally surrounding the group. With that, Do you know right? what I mean? And that, I've no evidence. They know they can get away with it. You know. Yeah, I've you know no I mean? evidence for that sort of. But you know, when you talk about toxic players in the changing room, for some reason I associate that with immediately with Rashford. Uh, I associate it with Jesse Lingard, Lingard and Pogba. And, and I only, feel yeah. like you know they're the lads that kind of have they're the spoiled kids and they're the ones that they. They talk about being professional, but they're the lads that are playing the, the two o'clock FIFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like he, I've no evidence. I'm not in that changing room. And he looks great in interviews and he speaks great, but 
I just feel like he's the toxic member. That I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a right. random question about about the kind of monster mentality question, which is ultimately what this is about. Um, is it because, and this is it just popped into my head? Is it because players are less working class now? I don't know because predominantly in the past there would have been players who were from working class backgrounds. Are in general, are more kids in society more kind of middle class or... It's the social or, or, media. Or, 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 I wouldn't more imagine affluent. so. Paul, because, more affluent. Because you think of the foreign no. nationals we've had at Manchester, you know, you think of somebody where Anthony is from in Brazil. Yeah. And yeah. He, he's now... Streets. Class, well, even, even Rashford, meals on wheels, you know. So. I, I, th- I think now that it's, it's the social media era we're living in. They all have a platform now that everybody... Who has a phone can promote themselves any way that they want. And if they, if they, they're a, they're a brand, not a football. You know, the the baggy try. I look like a rapper. I do this. I go out with this gorgeous girl. I go to New York when I want to. I do this when I want to. I plaster it all up. That's just happened to that's not football. No, and that's not. pulling their head away from football. Yeah, yeah. ultimately, you know? it's, it's a concentration thing, isn't it? It's, I think it's, so. It's, yeah. it's a focus thing. It's like I said before. I think it's it's you know, like some of these kids, you know, who are playing football. You know, there might be some elements of neurodiversity in it that's, that hasn't been. Engage with properly, mm. you know, maybe I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I don't use that as a negative. I'm just saying, like, some of these kids are not probably not getting therapy or things like that that they need that are playing football. What do you, like, is that a valid it point? could well be, yeah. but there's a lot to be said for players who do take it on board. Look at Declan Rice, he, yeah, he, he didn't come from a disadvantaged area, he came from a decent enough place and he's continued to do great in his career yeah. and uh, I thought he was overpriced at the 100 million Arsenal paid for him oh he's god like a steal. he's been outrageous Humble, this year yeah, he's he's been and he's had no advantages or disadvantages over the Marcus Rashford's of this world yeah. he's just it's, it's, the it's, it's, it's a, it's a mentality <laughs> it's, me- it's a mentality thing right it's a mentality thing but you have to ask yourself right why is there so many different players uh, with a mentality thing in United, why are there, why why is there why is there a concentration because in our biggest, club? Above because it? we're the biggest club in the world. Well, yeah, but, but then why aren't they tackling that? Why isn't every player supposed to be getting you know? Why doesn't ha- why doesn't why aren't Real Madrid? Culture, why aren't, why aren't Real Madrid and Man City having the same problems? Well, it's, the that's, cult, that, it's a exactly, culture. That's my point. You know? Yeah, it's a, that's it's my the point. Culture within the football club when you that's show it. up. And there's no standards held against you. Of course, you're going to fall off. You know, and a, a culture, a culture is one of the most difficult things to, yeah. to erase, and it takes ages. Yeah. And that's what they meant by open heart surgery when Ragnick said that. It takes a while. I think Radcliffe knows that. I think that um, Ten Hag knows that. Surgery you know? of the heart. So yeah. if you walk open into, heart, if you he's, a, he's linked to, now, to who's he linked with now? He's linked Byron, to Byron, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ralph Ragnick stood up there on the stage. He stepped said, out of it. He's not on the run <laughs> yeah, anymore. You need no. open heart surgery, and then went on to list all the wonder kids of football manager that we should sign, like he's some sort of expert. And shut up, Ralph Ragnick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out of my club, you absolute idiot! Like, well, but, v- what's about the Gargan press? You need yeah, to the sign Josco Govardial. You need to sign Erling Haaland. All right, we all play FIFA, Ragnick. Clown you, Jude Bellingham and Erling Haaland. Yeah. <laughs> he Sunday was right. Story. He he was right. He was right about the club needing open heart surgery, though. Yeah. But like, I mean, what, what was he going to do in six? Weeks? We fucked up yeah. the Bellingham thing, though. Like, we couldn't have had any more fucking, you know, prominent ex legend. That was when Sol Solskjaer went from. Yeah, like yeah. he met fucking Cantona, yeah. Brian Robson, Solskjaer. That's right. yeah, they're all there yeah, that yeah, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that wasn't enough for Air Jude, apparently. I don't well, blame him. Probably seen, thing... a, probably seen a fucking dirty pair of socks on the dressing room floor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, culture, yeah, yeah. culture, culture not far off that. wrong. Maybe he did because his mentality seems so together. Yeah, and and he, he's a shithouser as well. But yeah. um, maybe that's exactly what he did see. And maybe he's seen the culture is in disarray, and he's like. Well, yeah, he made the right decision. Like he there did. is a thing to be said. If he did go to United, we wouldn't have the footballer like he is now. Yeah, I mean, and we may not have a, 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 a we may not have had a, a Kobe Mania. You would have robbed. You would have yeah. robbed football of one of its best players at the moment. You know, like yeah. the kid's special and like Bellingham went there to die. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? Probably, you know, there's a thing he could maybe wouldn't have made it the same way as he has now. Right, looking ahead, um, the under 18s look very exciting. Um, mm. There's a couple of players that are going to come through clearly in challenge, which is exciting. I think that we should be focusing our, 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 our uh, attention on that. Mm. Um, there's a couple of shithousers in the under 18s. The under 21s are shite, but the under 18s and, you know, Ten Hag is is going to w- sh- shop all of them. 
and he's yeah. gonna he's gonna bleed them in. So they're exciting. Captain being from Salford, um, it's a really exciting time. Two hundred and fiftieth Academy graduate. Yeah, up, and what was his name? Ethan escapes Ethan Delaney, Wheatley. Devaney, a uh, Wheatley. Yeah. Wheatley. Wheatley, that was him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah we were having amazing. a the, really the long kid, conversation about that before. Yeah, the kid with the hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Bruno, like Bruno says, "I got nine minutes to make you a goal yeah. or something." It's it like you want um, smart signings combined with uh, with, the, with the academy graduates, mm-hmm. which which Ten Hag has proven it can do. Yeah, I think you know? I, I think it's going to go incredibly well. Or you know, we're all going to be trying to hang ourselves in this room in the middle of next. <laughs> Middle of next year. Room for four. Oh, you'd be amazed. It'd be like a, it'd be like a butcher's freezer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's a mentality with players in a Manchester United you know, transfer link, right? And I use Cody Gakpo as the example. We were very, very heavily linked. I'm delighted we didn't get him. Ultimately, yeah. I'm also delighted. But I'd say when his agent went to him and said, how do Man United are interested, I'd say as a media thought, went, how much can we get? When he <laughs> yeah. went to him and said, how do Liverpool are interested as a media thought went to, how quick can you get me there? Yeah. And that's a poison chalice at Man United. Who, who wants to play for Man United? Because it seems like how much money can you get? How much money could Sanchez get that City weren't going to give him? Did anyone see like, that? Um, does in- City ever want to be there? There was an Instagram post from from a player. Some I can't remember who it was, and uh, some one of the fans asked the player, "Would you go to United this season?" And he immediately responded, "Are you kidding? For the money they pay, <laughs> right?" Um, I think it might. I can't remember the player. I should have sent it into the group. Well, his name is Sammy Smothers. <laughs> <laughs> Sa- yeah. uh, but, but Sm- just that Smothers. Picture him <laughs> holding the number nine jersey in the <laughs> summer window, and you were just full of Thanks, gale. Paul. <laughs> But like that, that te- like that, you know what I mean? That's 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 it again. And and it goes back to what you were saying. Other clubs laugh at us. Other players and all that sort of thing laugh at us because our transfer business has been so dirt. And you know, yeah. Um, wrapping up, um, just very quickly, the FA Cup is. Look, anything the sun can shine on a dog's are some days. So that might happen to us that day. If Bruno plays a stormer, and if Haaland, who has been quiet recently, is quiet again, and Rasmus just realizes that. He is, you know, the player that we all hope he can be. We might get a result. What do you reckon? Are you fucking shaking your head for Maybe Rashford might step up that day too and show what he's, he's a about. big. Yeah, it's possible. Hmm. He does like to do that against City, to be fair. Uh, he does. And Bruno's on a run at the moment as well. I'd, I'd love for Casemiro to just show up. But yeah. but he looks very leggy these yeah, I'm gonna days. Yeah, I'm going to go 8-0 Very, very leggy. Yeah. You're gonna go uh, eight nil. Oh. <laughs> two, one, two one United. Two one United. Most of the May, time, May say, new like, F- F- Fernandez. That's what I say. Most of the time, you know, you say form goes out the window for games like this. I yeah. just don't think this team has to fight. You know, yeah, to, uh, I, I, to actually put up a decent effort. Is, Mar- is Martinez back for? Enough, he's back. Yeah, I think he's, he's, tra- he's in training now. He's so. Training. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, guys, thanks a million for listening, for watching. Um, There are a number of ways you can support us, and one of which is to contact your friends and harass them uh, Mm. to listen to the show. I'll be doing just that. Which Dame was going to do. (laughs) Um, You can follow us on social media on TikTok at Cult of Cantona. You can get us on Instagram and Facebook at The Cult of Cantona. We also have a private group for banter, and if you want to see, you want to interact with us online on Facebook and etc. On Facebook, this is news to a man. He's like, do we? <laughs> but he's nodding along. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> <laughs> What's Facebook? Is that what the you older chaps? That's use? all the kids use. Um, <laughs> And yeah, if you want to support the show, you can um, support us on uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash uh, Cult of Cantona. And buy us a coffee. Uh, you can become a member. We're, we're get, going to be giving away a signed Man United jersey for anybody who becomes a yearly member on Buy Me a Coffee. So check that out. Uh, signed by um, a number of ex players, which we're really excited about. So if you want that, and if you want to be uh, like, make all your mates well gel in your man caves by all means uh, become a member or just support the show uh, subscribe on YouTube Spotify um, Apple Podcasts wherever you get your cool uh, content um, thank you very much thank, thank you, you.